Testing, testing. All right, we should be live. Let me refresh the page. Let's see. Potentially live? Not 100 percent sure. Could be streaming. Uh, well, if you guys are here, uh, let's see. Read some of these comments you guys are talking about. Pre-type your questions, boys. It could be a good idea. It could be a good idea to type those questions out. All right, let's see. We're coming online now. <clears throat> so you guys know Bill will be joining me in just a little bit. He is currently trying on some uh, some very awesome armor systems that we just got delivered to Airsoft GI. They're really cool if you guys have seen uh, the BB Wars games. Uh, basically these armor sets are going to be traveling around the United States for some of these games. Uh, and you definitely will be able to see them pretty soon. They are really awesome. Let's see. Hello, Robert Kuzzo, 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 not sure you pronounce the last name, and that's a really interesting one. Uh, Josh sold me an Elite Force that was broken. I did sell you an Elite Force that was broken? When, where, and how did this happen? That's so crazy. I don't know. That's that's an interesting one. Uh, what do I think of the G&G SRXL? Well, G&G guns nowadays are pretty dang awesome. The SRXL, I have not had the chance uh, to use it at all whatsoever, so it's hard for me to like, give an opinion on it. I try not to do that about guns that I haven't used, but G&G products are pretty awesome, so you shouldn't have any issues with it whatsoever out of the box. Um, let's see. Uh, Bill is outside. He'll be in here in just a little bit for you guys, so don't worry too much about that. Um, let's see. What were some other ones? Do you think a hundred thirty dollars for a mystery box is a waste? Well, I guess it kind of depends on what you get in the mystery box. I mean, there's so many different uh, items and different giveaways and different just not giveaways I should say, but like different like uh, like the monster box winners. Like some of the monster boxes that we have done. Wait, train. I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but uh, some of the monster boxes that we have done have been crazy like a thousand plus dollars inside of one box so I mean if you have a couple of guns and you're maybe wanting a loaner gun or you could potentially win something super awesome it's kind of worth that gamble but also keep in mind uh, you know you it, the odds are are in your favor to get something that's obviously gonna be worth what you're paying um, but the ability to get something that's super awesome obviously is pretty cool and people do love to gamble so mystery boxes can be a pretty fun way to do that uh, what's a good sniper rifle JG Bar 10, Toki Marie VSR 10, uh, those are going to be great out of the box. Um, you're, I mean, the thing about sniper rifles is you're always going to need to do quite a bit of internal work uh, and a decent scope. I don't mean too crazy of a scope, but pretty much you're going to have to do a lot of decent internal work in order to get that gun shooting as far as you would want it to for sniper limits. So, um, what do I think about the Walther PPQ? Uh, well, the Walther PPQ is pretty awesome. It's a very similar pistol, in my opinion, to uh, something like the H&K VP9. Uh, obviously, a striker-fired kind of pistol. I think it's a great pistol in real life. In Airsoft, it is equally as awesome. Uh, when it comes to the PPQ, you don't see a lot of people running it, which is kind of surprising to me because it is such a unique uh, and relatively awesome gun. I mean, Walther has been making guns for quite some time. So, What are my thoughts on the KWA SR10? I actually started with a KWA SR7. Uh, and then I kind of like modified that gun from there and it went like kind of a little haywire with my uh, upgrades as far as that goes. But I mean, an SR-10 is pretty much a, a great platform to start on. I feel like a lot of people, actually, you can even build off of that and do some pretty awesome stuff if you want to. I mean, most KWAs nowadays out of the box are very, very solid for what you get, so. Um, let's see, what do I think of the Crytac Trident? Well, it's Crytac. Uh, great quality out of the box from what you get. Uh, the price obviously is there accompanied with that product as it is a premium product. But uh, I mean, I have tons of friends who all runs Crytax and they love them to death. So I mean, realistically, if you want a gun that's gonna last you probably your entire airsoft career uh, that you might have to do minimal maintenance to, uh, you know, Crytax definitely gonna be a great option for something like that. So um, let's see, why was I AMS? Okay, so I used to work at Airsoft Megastore. Uh, I also used to work at GI, and I took some time off to go traveling for a little bit, spent some time with family and friends. Uh, when I got back, Airsoft Megastore needed a little help. I had a friend that was over there, so went over to help them for a little bit. Now I left, and now I'm back over at GI, and Bill is about to join me in the studio with something pretty dang awesome. Bill, why don't you go ahead, and if you can see, have a seat He's trying not to kill myself. right about here as he tries not to kill himself. Oh, so we just got some of these in, which I'm sure... Uh, oh man, that actually looks really cool now that I actually see what it looks like. I mean, it 
probably look less weird if I had like sleeves. Yes, I Wait, think the, the not having sleeves uh, does make you look a little interesting. So <laughs> there we go, like that. <laughs> but uh, takes getting used to also. Like I, I would say, it, it's it's different because I mean you don't normally have shoulder pauldrons. So yes, yeah, I think that that kind of situation, like having, I feel like shoulder pauldrons really kind of, I don't know, I've never well never you can't had aim, armor on. You, like you can't aim down the sights in this thing. I would not think so. You, you, you literally just go full like Boba Fett and just like point and shoot. Right. Right, yeah, for everybody that's saying, oh, let's get over just a little bit this way. Uh, yes, that is the Galactac armor, as you can see. This one, obviously, is in uh, kind of like a stealth gray slash like urban gray kind of camouflage pattern. Um, are we going to be carrying these to sell? I, I don't know. That's a very good I'm question. not 100% we, sure either, guys. I really we, don't know. Uh, we brought them in for uh, basically BB Wars. The Imperial Commanders get to wear these, so it means I might get to wear one of these, which means I might get shot because I can't aim. So we'll see what Correct. happens. I don't yes. care. It looks cool. I mean, you get to wear... I mean, looking cool is 90% of the part, right? So as yeah. long as people know who to shoot at, which obviously they will in something like this. I mean, these um, things feel like Master Chief's forearms. It, like, it's a it's a cool armor set. I feel like the... I want to see it like in a full get-up, right? Like with yeah. all the other part, part, I, I, like Obviously I, a sleeve, a shirt with sleeve. I think maybe nice. tomorrow we might try that. I have my uh, my uh, olive drab stuff in the car. Yeah. So we might be able to like try it. Tomorrow at some point. It was just we recently got these in, so didn't really have time to swap anything out or anything like that. I'm trying to see what the comments say. Yeah, definitely. There's a lot of people saying like they would definitely buy something like that. Boba Bill, Boba Bill doesn't really work that well because unfortunately in Southern California we have a very crazy drink called boba, and it is, that is absolutely very delicious. Uh, and I think boba Bill might get a different connotation than he wants. Yeah. So. Um, but yeah, we're basically going to be using these for the BB Wars games for the commander, so they can look obviously very epic and awesome. Uh, since the BB Wars games, since it's all then it, then it's, themed, it's, it's easier to kind of tell things. who's the commander because sometimes it gets a little mixed up. Like, yeah, obviously Bob, you can tell he's carrying a giant axe, but uh, you know the Imperial commander is just a little bit harder. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, uh, I don't have the chin strap done just because I didn't want to spend the time adjusting. <laughs> Yeah, the Galactic stuff is really cool. We're going to have, we have, how many sets of these do we have? Uh, four. I'm wearing four number sets. three because I was like, why? Well, I didn't think of this. I am the third. The third? I'm the third Bill in my family, William John O'Brien III. So I was like, I should wear three you should have I am the three. third. Yeah, that's not a bad idea at all. Yeah, the Galactic stuff is really cool. You guys have probably seen this on, uh, I mean, geez, there were so many websites that were sharing this around once the real version of it got made. Uh, the gun guys, once they got a hold of it, were just, all the blogs were passing this around, so... It definitely looks really cool. So, Bill, what do you think, as, as far as, like, wearing this in an actual game, how do you feel you would do? Like, obviously, you can't really, like, aim that You know, it's well. got more visibility. I had, like, an Army of Two style mask that was, like, one I ordered from overseas. Mm -hmm. And that one had less visibility than this. This, at least, like, down to about here you is visible through here. So you can actually look down and kind of see where you're going. Nice. Because um, if it just cut off here, you're kind of like, uh, you yeah. can't really see. Um, the one thing I'd probably wear some form of heart. There's enough space in here to wear something hard that I do because just cheeks are exposed. But uh, yeah, I think that that kind of you would definitely want some mesh or just some. Yeah, I'd probably just I throw a mesh yeah. mask on underneath just to keep from getting that. And then, I mean, the other thing is you can't really aim down sights, but I mean it's airsoft. We don't really aim down the sights that often anyway. Well, I mean there'd be a lot of people that argue out there about argue. Or argue like, I mean, about I mean, zero I, rifles and that. I normally things, do, but like I can. I can just get it right to here, and I can kind of shoot where I'm going. I mean, you're, yeah. you're Boba Fett. He doesn't aim down sights. Uh, will we do a TGH with the Galactic armor? Possibly. This is a possibility. Yeah, I, I think it's a good I possibility. Should, I, I should just do a TGH, and we'll just do like a Boba Fett kind of like uh, parody, where it's just I'll just grab voice lines from Boba Fett. Yeah, Star right, Wars like, movie. Just that's only that's only the things. You he mean says like in the, the five lines he had? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, like the, the five lines. What if he doesn't survive? <laughs> well, tell us what kind of helmet it is. He's no good to me, dead. <laughs> yeah. you know, it's just like, <laughs> just like I don't. That doesn't help us. Uh, at all. <laughs> we might have to go get like uh, like a piece of cloth to hook on the one side, like a cape. Yes. Um, no, like we cape. don't have a rocket pack though. We do not have a rocket pack, unfortunately. Did Which he ever do the full cape where it like kind of covered his front too, or was it just like the shoulder? Um, I don't know. I have not seen, like, I mean, obviously in the movies he has just covering his shoulder, but there's probably the concepts and stuff like that from other, like, Boba Fett yeah. Mandalorian stuff, but, uh, um, all right, well, answer some questions, since this is a Q&A live stream, Bill is going to sweat to death in the armor. Good I, I'm going to probably take off the helmet soon. <laughs> well, if you, if you want to step out for a minute to de, hey, it, de don the armor that Wait, you got, you got to do, like, the dun, dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, when he sets like, everything down. <laughs> 
It does get a little toasty in there. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, my wearing, hair my hair is nice and funky right now. <laughs> All right. Wearing full gear is definitely going to be one of those things that uh, These are the easy parts to take off. It's the shoulder parts that are a little tricky. Oh, because of the straps and stuff <laughs> yeah. like that. Yeah, I can imagine. I had Kevin from our art department help me strap those down <laughs> so they won't flop around everywhere. All right, so let's hit some of the questions. I'm going to scroll back up just a little bit in the chat and oh, there we go. That's one, one forearm sec. out. All right, so Someone asked, are we carrying the Troy TRX guns? Yes, we are. We actually just did a video on those. Uh, Brent Gill is asking about the Troy TRXs. Uh, pretty cool little rifles. They come in three different platforms. I think they're all the same price. Yeah. The FPS is all the same. Uh, so pretty much you just get the gun that you need for whatever play style you have. If you're a CQB guy or you want something that's a little longer for outdoors. Um, all the Troy stuff on there is really cool looking. Personally, for me, that pistol grip is a little small. I don't like really slim pistol grips. I want it to like be... Uh, a little more for my hands to hold on to. Um, but they're definitely really, really cool guns. Uh, oh, honestly, the TRXs are, are pretty awesome. So, um, Let's see, what was another question? How do I change the color of my plate carrier? You're going to want to get some dye, a very large tub, water, and YouTube tutorials. <laughs> so, <laughs> Yeah, Bob is not here. He is out today for an audition, so we miss him dearly. Do we? Nah. Yeah. We'll see you tomorrow. It'll be cool. We'll thing, see so. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, can you do me a favor and get this one strap? Just press the button and pull it out completely. Press the button and pull I got you. Yeah. Oh, I see how they did that. Yeah. Oh, that's really going to stay in there. Yo, yeah. No, it doesn't go anywhere. Yeah. Oh, my God. There we go. Okay. Now we can. I just had deja vu right now. It's really weird. Yeah. I, like, literally, I feel like I've, I've had you unstrap my shoulder pauldron before. Well, hey, you know, this is something that's happened before. Maybe another lifetime. Or, or another... What was that discussion we had about the, the multiple universe, or like the when it oh, becomes sim aware, it, it oh, becomes simulation. World. He's talking about simulation theory. Um, let's see. Oh, most graceful removal of armor ever. Okay. Indeed. Indeed. It Ooh, is. How bad is it? So, how, what do you think, weight wise? How much do you think that whole thing weighs? Um, I'm, let me see. Like, I mean, the helmet itself is actually pretty heavy because yeah. I mean, if you guys could see, I mean, this stuff is hand molded. That's a good what. Half an inch, three quarters of an inch Probably thick, right there. Of of, thick, yeah. I'm not sure what this material is, but the you know, helmet itself is a couple pounds. Um, I'd say it's actually all of this is equivalent to my Mitch. My yeah. one. So armor-wise, I would say with just that plate in it. I mean, the plate carries everyone. Probably that piece of plate has to be a beat, at least five pounds. Okay, it's not too much. Really, it, it's not too much. Like it, it's case. just when I mean these things are actually surprisingly heavy. These have got to be like a pound. Yeah, I did see that one. Um, I picked those up and I was just like, wow, that's kind of. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Let me see if there's a way I can live stream this on Facebook too, using the helmet as a brace. Yeah, definitely. Let's ask some more questions for you guys. Someone said, "What night vision goggles are recommended? Uh, whatever ones you can afford, because they're very expensive." So, uh, I mean, if you can get a set of Call of Duty ones, uh, honestly, they do the trick. I mean, it's not the best stuff out there, obviously, but uh, they're still pretty neat and it kind of looks the part. As far as real night vision goes, you can expect to spend anywhere from one to two, all the way up to five to six, seven thousand dollars. I saw some cheap ones at Bass vision. Pro for like five hundred. Granted, they're talking about like, like like helmet mounted. Well, I mean they're not helmet; they, they were assume. they were goggle ones. But I mean they're yeah. probably like low quality Gen ones or something like that. Yeah, it's a, right. let me see. night vision is not something cheap. Check Facebook uh, groups and stuff like that for people that are really into that kind of stuff. Um, let's see. So, uh, Captain Momo asks, gas blowback or AEG? AEG all day, ease of use is something that is severely underrated. The ability to grab a battery, get your gun, some BBs, and go play and not have to worry about filling your gas mags, making sure your gun's all cleaned out, making sure your bolt's lubed up. Uh, just kind of really makes me really want to go ah, to AEGs nowadays. So, let's see. What else we got? How much auto corrected your name from Josh to Hash? Well, hey, you know what? That's what do you eat a lot of hash browns apparently? Do oh, where was that question? Where was it? Uh, do you think painting guns makes them more effective? I assume by effective you mean it helps you blend in better, and by blend in better, if, yeah, for sure, it definitely would help. I mean anything with a black silhouette or anything that looks uh, out of place as far as camouflage goes is definitely going to throw you off. Uh, and guns have a very particular shape, so definitely painting your guns if you're planning on running a full camouflage outfit could possibly help. Um, but obviously keep in mind if you're playing at an arena and uh, you know there's no cover or brush or anywhere to camouflage yourself into, you're probably not going to do much. I mean, but painted guns do look significantly I think, I think it's the best we're going to fit. Yeah, that's probably pretty good. We're doing this on Facebook. We're doing well, it, yeah, we're doing so, this on Facebook too, so it's um, going to be live stream session. 
live stream session. I know, but it'd probably be a pretty good way to do it, I would imagine. Three, two, one, and we are live on the Facebooks. What's up, guys? We are live on the live show on the YouTubes and now on the Facebook. So, so many questions. Wherever you're at, ask your questions. We're doing a live Q&A here in the GI studio. Wow, I look really sweaty. I think that helmet was a lot hotter than it, it probably I was, was expecting. Um, but yeah, go ahead, throw your questions in the chat here or the chat over there on the YouTubes. Taco Ozu has a really good question. He says, what paintball should I use? Also, what is the best hopper? Uh, in my personal opinion, I would have to say that the best paintballs probably, I mean, the Elite Force ones are pretty awesome, right? And for hoppers, I mean, you can't go wrong with a 300 round high cap. Yeah, um, I mean, pretty I mean it's, yeah, that's probably, I mean, you can get some bigger hoppers if you really need. There's some bigger magazines, um, but I mean, or bigger hoppers, I should say, for those uh, paintballs. Um, but yeah, you'd have a tough time really finding anything above that, so. Brilliant. <laughs> Hi, William. Uh, sorry for mispronounce your last name. Bellinger? I think that's right. Sup? Bellinger? Is that, did I say that right? I think, I think that's okay. Hey. Shoot the armor. We will definitely shoot the armor, but it, we will not shoot it on purpose. We'll yeah. At an event. So yeah. <laughs> if we can not stress those out as much as we can. I think scratched up my neck. That it looks, I'm looking at it visually, Is it and red? it's quite red. So okay, yeah. It's got scratched up my awesome. neck. So. Bill, what are your opinions on the A and K MK46? Is it worth the money? Pull it up real quick on the, the uh, on our website, so I want to see how much it's going for. Because off the top of my head, I'm not really sure what uh, what it's being sold at right now. It says it's the Mark uh, 46. Mm -hmm. Mark 46. A and K. Takes a second for our internet. Okay. Oh, I remember doing the review on that one. If you, I mean, the tan one right now is 310 bucks. I remember shooting that thing. Actually, pretty. Pretty solid gun. Like I mean, the A and K guns, like you know, for being a lower priced, you know, rifles and stuff like that, they they are actually really good. Especially their AKs. Their AKs are incredibly solid. But for like three hundred and ten bucks for the tan one or three fifty, I think it's a great option for a light machine gun because usually those things are what four or five hundred bucks, something like that. They're, yeah. they're usually up there in like a pretty pretty like high end amount of money so i, I think mean, but like the one. guns are awesome like yeah. they, they're really really great for the price uh, and the quality of them is really good too so that's one of the things that i think is uh elliot says when is the next mystery box or patch package we currently do not have any eta on that yeah not 100 percent sure bill what is the best starter pistol it really depends on your price but i feel like you can't go wrong with the elite force m1911 a1 100 bucks co2 powered so it means easy to get gas yeah. And I mean, it's got really good kick. Magazines are, I mean, pretty easy to find too. They're about thirty bucks. I think they're that's a really good option because I mean, it's lower price. You're getting the full blowback everything. Right. Like that. I think I, I wish that a lot more um, manufacturers would take note of the rising popularity of CO2 powered pistols. Uh, CO2 is so much more widely available for people yeah. to get a hold of. Uh, there's a lot of misconceptions and misnomers about green gas, about how propane works, about voiding your warranties. Yeah. Um, and I just wish a lot more manufacturers would look into doing CO2 options, especially for those cold weather environments, because uh, there was a lot of people last year that got messages from that were like, hey, I use a gas blowback, but I haven't been able to play because it's just too cold. So that's definitely kind of a bummer. So I would hope that if it's any manufacturers watching, please, more uh, CO2-based CO2 pistols. pistols would be really awesome. Here's a question from the Facebook chats. M-Lock or Keymon? I go M-Lock. Uh, personally, the reason why I go M-Lock is because it is it, it's better. I don't know. Like I, I'm, I'm an M-Lock just because, honestly, I like the look better. Yeah, I, I don't like all the little... Of the key mods. Yeah, my thought process on it is, is like M-Lock can remove more material with their design. If the whole if the whole process is to just remove as much material and make it as lightweight as possible, M-Lock has done that better mm -hmm. than better than key mod. Uh, plus, it's got Magpul branding. I believe it's a Magpul based product. I'm it is. They, sure. They're the ones who filed the patent, but they made it open source so everyone can. Good. Good for them. It. They, that's great for the industry. So that way, everybody gets to use it. But I would definitely say that Mag Magpul is my probably would be my go to on that one. Yeah, so. mine too. Um, let's see. Somebody says, oh, can you put a 633 millimeter barrel in an ERG? Um, I don't see why not. Um, I mean, you, you can, can. It's not going to work very well. I mean, it will be very small, but I mean, if you if you want to. Wait, wait, wait. What was the length again? 363 millimeters. Oh, no. That would work fine. I thought you were... I, what's the, that, what's the standard one? Standard's a uh, 363 is an M4. Oh, then yeah. yeah I, thought, I thought you said 603 for some reason. This was like... Oh. Sure. I mean, go yeah. for it. You could definitely put a different barrel on an Elite Force, or not an Elite Force, a yeah. KWA. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, the, those ones are work fine. Yeah. 
Uh, do you guys have any LiPo tips? I just got my LiPos and I have a balance charger and I know enough to keep them from blowing up while charging, but what about the rest of the time? So, I mean, when it comes to LiPos, as far as, I, I mean, my LiPo considerations are usually, I don't keep them inside my house. I will try to keep them in like, uh, in my garage or somewhere where if a fire does break out for whatever reason, I want to mitigate that loss as much as possible, right? Because lipos, the only thing you really have to worry about a lipo is if it gets cracked or like it explodes, yeah. right? Everyone's seen those videos of like the little scooter swagways exploding mm -hmm. from the flames. Like that's technically a lipo battery. So mm -hmm. keeping those inside of those like silver lipo sacks that you guys see all the time, that's probably a very safe way to do yeah. it. Um, but other than that, I mean, charging them and making sure that they don't get damaged is really 90% of LiPo batteries. The rest of it's just keeping them on the chargers and using them when you need to. So um, I would say just grab one of those silver bags and you'll probably be all right. Here you go. What has been your favorite Milsom event you've gone to? This is from the Facebook chat. Jeez. Why don't you go first? That's a tough one. Uh, broken home. Broken home? Because I got to fly in a helicopter and I've never done that before. So my first time flying in a helicopter, I was shooting at people. Yeah. I mean, flying in helicopter is pretty friggin' awesome. So yeah. I, I would have to, I haven't had a chance to do that yet, so I can't talk much about that one. But uh, I would have to say my favorite Milsim event that I got to go to. And you know what's funny is it wasn't even like a Milsim Milsim event. Um, it was a game that uh, Dave Bax from Airsoft Obsessed threw up at uh, the field in Clovis, California. I can't remember the name of it right oh, now. Oh, I, I know what you're saying. Yeah, it was a 24 hour yeah, op. And we just had a blast. I got to play with a bunch of friends Jonathan from Airsoftology, uh, just a bunch of friends out there. And it was really such a great time. Uh, so I, I definitely think that, honestly, like. I have more fun playing the games. Like, whatever game it is, as long as it's with a few of my friends, I will, yeah. I will usually have a pretty good time. But, yeah. um, Definitely. Let's see. Okay, so let me go back up. There's a question that I did want to answer. Do you have any information about the new regulations on shipping airsoft gear to Ireland slash Europe? Uh, now, we do have quite a few fans from over the pond, and unfortunately, I don't know the logistics or what has changed on that topic. I read about this a little bit earlier today on Reddit that there were some changes potentially. Oh, um, yeah, if anything has happened with that, uh, please feel free to let us know if there's any new information. But um, our, we try to communicate with the, the shipping people as much as possible uh, to always get the best rates and try to go around all the laws as much as we can to make sure everything is uh, as safe as possible and easy to ship for you guys. So. Um, if you have any issues with that, please call our customer service, and they'll be happy to help you guys out with that. So, um, Josh the AK Man, that's a cool name, says YouTube channel chips. Other than staying constant with content, or other than staying consistent with your posts, what are some things you can do on your YouTube channel other than other than consistent consistently post? Well, I mean, post stuff people are interested about. Yeah, I think content, definitely having like content creation is going to be the big one. Like talking about stuff that's relevant, new items, new stuff, just uh, in general. I mean, running a YouTube channel, I'm not the best when it comes to running a YouTube channel to like try to uh, make it money or, you know, whatever, get more uh, out of it. But I don't know. I really think it comes down to like content, personality, having stuff that people want to watch. You got to ask yeah. yourself like, why do I want to watch this? Like if you went and played that airsoft event and you want to upload your footage so you can watch it and share it with your friends and be like, oh, check out this cool kill I got, that's awesome. But like, I don't I don't know what your day was like. I don't know why that kill is important or what those yeah. reasons are. It's like, I'm not gonna watch that content. So it's gotta be something that's gotta really pull people. Like the reason why Novrich has gotten so big is because he does very engaging content, like very small amounts of it. Yeah. Right? But it's stuff that people want to see. People really want to see the BB float through the air and, and, hit, and somebody. hit someone in the like, face. That's all they want to see. And I think that that's one of the things that like paintball channels really did back in the day. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Is because paintball you can see those hits. Well, yeah. I mean, it's they so a lot rewarding slower. to see and a hit. Holy cow! Oh, like that like, one that video that kid that gets shot. In the that face. little kid. Yeah, he just steps out. And he like full yes. on like does like a flip. No, no, entirely. I, I think that's one of the things that we'll see a change as oh as YouTube videos and stuff go on. Is just uh, you know, definitely seeing seeing what the content shifts towards, what people actually want to watch. So, uh, I do not like cheesesteaks. Thank you. Go. I'm not sure why that question is relevant. I'm just not really you enjoying them much. Multicam air or DCU for desert environment? For DC, uh, probably multicam air. I would assume. But that or more just multicam. They were just asking which one would you prefer. Oh, oh I, I, if I was in a desert environment, I, I guess. I guess Arid or just multicam, regular multicam. I mean, well, they're asking between those two, multicam Arid or you know the Desert Combat Uniform. Um, I mean, 
I mean, one's blobs, one's square blobs. Yeah, my my logic tells me that Multicam has spent more money in marketing and research that, to that's tell my... me that this, this pattern is better for a certain reason. Uh, so I guess I would go with the new technology. And me too. Yeah, I'm a firm believer in, like, new technology. Like, I think that that's going to be one of the things that is always, like, a good thing for any industry. So, like, when, like, new camouflage patterns come out, I'm always excited about that. It's, like, awesome. How, how do you get such nice hair? Oh, well, Harrison. Uh, <laughs> how I get such nice hair is uh, I actually have a good friend of mine, Harrison. He works at a company called Action Sports Group. Uh, I actually just go to his house, and he's got some great essential That was roles. Action Sport Games. Is it Games Group? I was. I, I know there's a magazine. Games. There's a magazine at one point. There was a magazine at one point. I think it's Games, though. You're right. Harrison, it's it's Action Sport Games, right? I've always referred to them as just ASG. Yeah, I have too. They are just <laughs> ASG. What is, in your opinion, the most comfortable plate carrier? Not wearing one is the most comfortable. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> plate carriers are not meant to be comfy. The most comfortable <laughs> plate carrier is a battle belt. <laughs> yes, exactly. Um, but, I mean, I, I my, my, uh, I almost said Condor. It's not Condor. Spectre NPC is really comfortable. Yeah, definitely. Um, but, I mean... Let's face it, all plate carriers kind of suck when it comes to the whole ventilation thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I've tried on a ton of plate carriers. I would say the most comfortable plate carrier, uh, oh, man. I feel like they all feel the same. I, I mean, my LBT 6094 is not comfortable at all. I mean, it's a very nice rig. It's a very nice, like a very nice chest uh, plate carrier, but what, it's not comfy. Like, what's the one you wore? Lion claws. It's on that one. It's the my L, my RV. I, I guess an RV technically is a plate carrier. It does carry a plate in the front, but it doesn't have one in the back. Yeah, okay. I don't know what they. I'm not sure what like quality because it's kind of a chest rig. It's kind of a plate carrier. So, I would say like the most comfortable one is definitely going to be. Um, Oh man, I'm sorry, Harrison. I got it wrong. <laughs> Action sports games. Uh, I would say probably the most comfortable one is going to be like get some shoulder pads. Like I, I thought, oh, shoulder yeah. pads are very underrated uh, as far as like when you're wearing plate carrier stuff because it like wearing plate carriers for eight to ten hours like on an op or whatever the circumstances are. Uh, get some shoulder pads, especially you're if you're running like a gas gun. Definitely. Well, like the thing I think a lot of people don't realize is like airsofters carry a lot of kit that that's is completely unnecessary. Oh, yeah. Oh, so yeah. it's like, if you could lighten that load up or make it a little easier for your body, please do that. Like, you know, be good to yourselves, guys. Yeah. <laughs> drink like, some water. Take too. care. Take care. <laughs> drink some water. Like, take care. Drink some, drink some water. Come on. Now. I, I, I will say this, though. If you're doing anything uh, that's going to be more than a couple, like, quick play sessions, plate carrier-wise, like, get one with hydration. Like, you got to have hydro. So I would say the most comfortable plate carrier is one that carries a lot of water. Yeah. For me, like, I just got to have water. I mean, even hydration. with the shorter stuff, I usually still fill up the, the hydration carrier. Not just for, like, drinking, but for balance. Yes. So I have a lot of weight in the front. Yeah. I need to balance it out, or else my back is going to be killing me. It definitely does do that. What do you guys think about Bolt getting out of Airsoft? Um, I hadn't heard too much about Bolt I getting out I of I hadn't heard of that at all. I, I know that they had come out with a couple of guns. Uh, they had a recoil engine one, but it was recoil in the center of the gun, and people were like kind of iffy about that. Yeah. I know they had like the second gen uh, AEGs that didn't have any recoil that were actually really good. I did a review of those when I was at AMS, and like I actually really liked them. They were pretty decent. Um, yeah, train. Um, but I didn't. I haven't heard too much about them getting yeah. out of airsoft. I, I had neither. I didn't know that they were like deuces. Yeah, that's interesting. But I mean, nonetheless, uh, the product was pretty good. Maybe they just couldn't find their place in the market. I mean, there's a lot of. Uh, Airsoft is changing very, very quickly. There's a lot of new companies coming in and a lot of new products coming in that really are changing the market. Like, the ability to get an awesome gun... Yeah, cool stuff like that. Like, but the ability to get an awesome gun for $150 is so much different than when uh, we, either of us both started, so... Um, okay, so let's see. Let's get some more questions. How do you feel about G&G 120-round mid-cap mags? Are those just, like, the M4 ones? Because I had yeah, the ones that were so. 79 rounds, and those were fantastic. Yeah, I mean, the when it comes to mid-caps, 120 rounds is right about where you want to be. Um, I mean, I don't know what the price is on those, but I would say that G&G mid-caps are probably going to feed very well in most guns. I mean, G&G &G does their due diligence. So, um, so yes, and then Rad Plastic is saying they're about to release an MP5. They are not going out of business. So. Oh, okay. Conflicting reports. We don't really know what's going on with Bolt. I know they made yeah. some cool guns. I guess we'll find out and see what's happening. Oh. So Here's a good question mm -hmm. from Connor Doran. What do you guys prefer in an airsoft loadout? Practicality, comfort, or looking cool? Because I use a satchel for the whole front, wait, for, practicality. for the whole practicality thing. You know, I th I've i never really thought about it much. I just kind of build it out, out however it works for me. Like, I mean, it may look maybe not practical to someone else, but for how I play or something like that, it, it works out. It's practical for me. Right. Like, um, it, it all really, I mean, I feel like they all kind of go hand in hand. Like, 
you get something practical, it's comfortable, it's going to probably look cool, too. They, they all kind of in line. Sometimes that, that can generally be, like, the methodology. But, like, for instance, like, okay, we both know that if we took a dragon spine belt system, like, mm-hmm. it's just literally two magazine patches that holds four mags each and a dump patch that, like, we would probably play just as well as if we had a plate carrier. Yeah. Like, realistically speaking, loadouts that suit your play style very specifically, like... If you're the type of person that is very, like, you like to transition to your pistol when you enter a room, having your pistol at an area that you conveniently can get to it very quickly. Like, for me, I'm not really big on, like, using pistols, so, like, I will avoid going indoors as I usually am outside sniping a lot. So I don't have my pistol in, like, a super readily accessible area. Mm -hmm. I let my other team members go in first. But if Bill's the pistol guy, like, he's got to have that ready, so, like, his kit needs to be suited for that, whereas mine doesn't. I feel like... The thing about building kits is like, it's so much about what you need on the field for your specific person and then your team. Like, yeah. I, I see a lot of people that will run stuff that, like, just never is going to get used. Like, they have extra magazines on their backpacks, and it's just yeah, like... That's like, weird. like I, I've never run into a situation where I've had to reach into a backpack and hand somebody else a magazine. Like, usually everybody's loaded to the gills, or they have their own stuff. I mean, right? that's why, like, like, everything I have is pretty much easily accessible, like, that if I need. Like, I have ones over here that... You know, because I shoot left-handed, I use the taco pouches on the left because it's easier to pull them out quick, right. and then the stuff I have to actually manipulate out of them right. So it's all kind of like... I, I really think it comes down to user preference. Yeah. My personal thought process on it is we are we are LARPing. We are live action role-playing. And yeah, we are totally role-playing LARPing. soldiers. Or we're LARPing. role-playing militia guys. Or we're role-playing some other faction, right? Yeah. Like, my take on it is I am playing a role. What can I do to better play that role? Now, I'm not always playing that way. Like, we're not always role-playing. Like, we're not always doing milsim, right? Like, sometimes we're just doing pickup games. At that yeah. point, like, whatever. I'm just going to grab a belt and just go play. Like, I don't mm-hmm. have a battle belt and have fun with it. So, I think if you're doing milsim, think about what role you're playing because we are role-playing. And then take your kit into consideration for that. I, I mean, looking cool in Airsoft is a large part of it, though. I mean, let's all be serious here. Like, I think everybody likes to look cool. <laughs> yes, Dylan, so. we do ship to Canada. We do ship to Canada. Yeah, a lot of stuff. So, um, Okay, let's see. Uh, if you have an Airsoft game, or if you have an Airsoft game, where would you have it, inside or outside? So if you, if you could... All right, how about... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to rephrase this question a little bit. If you could have your ideal place area, what would it be, indoor or outdoor? Honestly, my ideal area is game pond because it's an outdoor field that's basically inside of a building. Because then you have no outside influence in terms of wind or anything like that affecting your shots. Definitely. I mean, that's why it's one of my favorite places to play is because where I shoot and aim, that's where it actually goes. Right. I, I kind of got to agree with Bill on this one. I mean, uh, having like an underground facility or a parking structure or just... I want a lot of open space with very well-designed cover that allows for little environmental factors. Like I want to be able to play Airsoft 365 days a year at this facility, yep. right? Like, having air conditioner uh, would be amazing. Like, I wish more fields had the ability to do AC. Do, like, man, oh, if, my God. If GamePod had an, an air conditioner, That's what I'm saying. it'd like, be amazing. If, they, I would, if GamePod could, like, charge, like, $10 more from every single person get, that came and in. And get an industrial just, AC. And no, just, it, just, it just pay for the day of the AC, right? Right. Like, however much it would cost. Like, I'll just pay an extra $10 out of everybody to pull in to just have the AC. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, having an indoor place, having an indoor facility with outdoor elements. Like, you know what I really feel like people should do more of? Is bring foliage indoors. Like, mm. why do people not get, like, fake trees and, like, I hardly fake, ever fake trees see are expensive. Them. I get that, but, like, you can build them or, like, create something. Like, uh, so often it's just wood barriers. Or, it's or plywood, wood barriers, and two-by-four. Right? Like, or they could do this. I had a friend who went up to um, Oregon, uh, University of Oregon, you know, Ducks. They have a practice field that's indoor and can simulate pretty much any weather. Like, rain. 40 degrees, 100 and something degrees, See, change of humidity. What if we had a field that had that? It's like, oh, we're going to make this like a jungle. Here you go. Humidity. <laughs> I just imagine, imagine? From, like a, from a a cold weather perspective, like, oh, we're going to have a super cold game. Like, everyone's got to have like Arctic gear. Like, just the ability to change the mm-hmm. field elements would drastically change oh my people God, playing right. there, too. So. Uh, somebody asked this earlier, and I thought it was pretty funny, so I don't want to. I don't want to miss this one. Airsoft vids. He asked, "Are you paid to do this? Are we paid to do this? We are paid to do this. I think this, I am paid. This to do is this. part of our job. Yes, yes, we do get paid to talk to you about airsoft stuff. Um, sometimes, not all the times. Um, but I would definitely say that an indoor field would be probably pretty awesome. So, I'm trying to remember what that one says. Do you do you, do you even think getting shot Shut by an airsoft is, is a pain, pain that you? So I'm thinking what he's saying is like. 
is getting shot by an airsoft gun, the pain of that, part of what makes you enjoy the hobby somewhat, I'm guessing? Maybe. I, I don't know. It's a masochistic, I feel like. but Yeah, I'm not, I don't enjoy the pain. Like, if that's what you're asking, no. I'm happy but that I, mean, I know that I got shot. Yeah. Like, so I can stop getting shot. <laughs> yeah, I mean. <laughs> like, I'm happy so I know I can raise my hand very quickly. Oh, Andre, that actually <laughs> looks almost, I could see the image in my, in the tiny little profile. Josh, which, SMP or Yeah, it actually star. does look almost Polar identical star. to mine. Good job. Um, I really don't have any factual reason to back that up other than it's pure opinion based. I'm sure the SMP is a great system. The guys over there are awesome. Haven't had a chance to use it, so I can't speak much about it. So I definitely would say go with the Polar Star. I've had remarkably amazing results with that system, uh, so I would definitely say enjoy that. How much XP does a kill give you? How, how much XP do you guys get for a kill on the battlefield? I've always wondered this myself too. What? I mean, because like obviously I'm trying to level up. Someone's asking troll questions. So I'm yeah, just I mean, they're amazing questions. Is it is it over nine thousand? If I hope it would be, because I feel like. I need a lot of XP to get to that next level if yep. I'm really going to step up my game. I don't know if it's sad. impressive or sad, but I've hit a level 101 on Fallout 4. I'm it's, like, it's kind of sad. It, I, you know how it like tells you. Well, what's sad about it though is that you it wasn't through killing things. It's a good chunk of it through building. That's what I'm saying. That's what's yeah. Sad about. Um, but I mean, like the thing is, you know how it keeps track of like how much time you've played. I'm up yeah. to over 10 days of gameplay now. Yeah, sounds about right. Uh, over what? That's over 240 hours. Yeah. Granted, I have been playing it since day one, so I mean, you do a couple it's hours been out for a little or something while. like that. It's when you span it out over time, it's really not that bad. So, uh, someone's asking me, but last both of us, HPA or DSG? So I was high powered air, or high pressure airsoft. High. High pressure air. Is, what is <laughs> HPA? High pressure. Or? Uh, yeah, I think it's high like pressure. Okay, high pressure or uh, dual sector gears. Now, a dual sector gear basically just means that for every one time I pull the trigger, it's going to cycle twice, effectively doubling your rate of fire. HPA, it's more reliable in my mind. I feel like there has never been a desire in me to have a DSG build for the purpose of using it on full auto. No, that's the thing. Is for I, the semi-automatic purposes of just having a super crisp trigger response yeah. on an AEG, like that actually is worth it for me in my personal opinion. But the, but the full auto, no. But no. I, I, for me, I don't really understand the, the point of increasing the gun's rate of fire to something that is so unreasonable that it's like, why would I ever... I've seen some videos, I think everybody has, uh, obviously, of certain players at different fields, uh, you know, just really cranking up the rate of fire to the point that it's like, I, as soon as I aim at you and I pull the trigger for two seconds, like, there's a wall of BBs yeah. coming yeah. that is unavoidable. There's nothing you can do to stop that from basically hitting you. So it's kind of like, at a certain point, the accuracy through volume, or volume, accuracy through volume, yeah, yeah, accuracy through volume, That's right. um, just... Is such a stupidly unfun. It's such an unfun play style. There's n not a lot of skill involved. Yeah, in it's, my personal yeah, opinion. Yeah, I don't like the whole brr, the BB yeah. hose thing. It's not fun. Yeah. Now I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that would say that like, well, you know, it's the way that I I like to play, and my friends all like to play it this way, and like that's totally fine. Like I have no qualms with that whatsoever. Um, the only problem with super high speed builds in like regular games, like where everybody's playing, is that like. That 13-year-old, 14-year-old, 15-year-old, 16-year-old kid that like saved up for like two or three months and is so excited to get an Airsoft because he idolizes you type of players that have the money to build these awesome DSG guns. He's looking at you guys going like, man, these guys are so awesome. I would love to be like them, be able to play as awesome as they are. And then goes out there and plays that one game and just gets hosed so bad from someone that just, that kid's never going to want to play again. So it's like, I think that there's a, definitely a line and a limit in some regards, but it's hard to say like what mm -hmm. side that all falls on. Private games kind of eliminate that, but I don't know. I feel like for the newer players, like those super high high speed builds can be a bit of an issue at times. So. Yeah. Yeah. But let's have some more questions. Let me see what do we got here. Full auto is a waste of BBs, in my opinion. Uh, waste of BBs is fun though. <laughs> How much would an M two four nine HPA run you? Well. Depends on which HPA unit you get. Like, I mean, if you do, um, what was it, like the F1 or the SMP, those the are SMP, about, yeah. about, like, what, 350 400 bucks. And then you have to have the gun itself, which can vary from, yes. like, 350 up to 500 600 depending on what brand you want. So, if I mean, you get, like, a super high-end one, yeah, you could definitely be spending some dollars. Yeah, I mean, you're looking at probably minimum of, like, 600 bucks um, for the engine. But that's not including the tank and all the other stuff. Yeah, I would say, like, if you're looking to get, like, a... You want a 249? It's a 249, right? Uh, I think it's an M249. So, yeah. 249 with one tank. 
you're probably getting pretty close to like seven to eight hundred dollars. Yeah. I would imagine like after you get your lines and your tank and stuff like that. Yeah. You may spend a little more, but it's hard to say. Josh the AK Mans asks, what do you think of the G and G tracer that is threatening to make Airsoft into laser tag? Yes, G and G is making laser tick tag for Airsoft. What's your opinion on it? So the question is, first of all, there's a lot of parameters. How does it work? If it works, there's only, there's only two ways really, right? I mean, mm -hmm. there, uh, I so. the one way is I pull the trigger, a BB fires, and it shoots a laser at whatever my target is. So basically that effectively means within 60 yards, give or take, I can shoot you with the BB. Out of that range, I can shoot you still, and laser. the laser is going to hit you. So now the next question is, do I wear something that tells me I got hit by the laser? I believe you do. You would have to. Yes. Right? There's no other way to get around Yes. That. Okay, so now, now the problem with this system is I have to wear something in order for your gun to work. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to buy something just so you can have a fun time playing. Now, I'm not saying that there aren't players out there that would do that, but it just seems like it'd have to be something that was very mandated, right? Like you Yeah, have to it, it'd basically be like a field that like all of our guns use this. You come and you play and you use this gun. I don't think it would really be like a thing where it's like you put it on your own gun. Yeah, because it, it, I, it would be a cool system. And like obviously range is one of those issues in Airsoft that I don't know if we'll ever be able to really like come, like get past because you just can't shoot out to a certain range without the gun start becoming too lethal lethal within a certain range so like the the doing the system where you have like laser tag kind of does help that a little bit but it is a little tough like i don't know like there's got to be like a mandatory like anybody who plays airsoft you have to have this kind of yeah thing, that's right? why i think it'd be mainly like a special specialized field that has the airsoft and like you only use their but man could you imagine how cool it would be to like see some dudes like 500 yards out and like look at them through binoculars and all of a sudden your little tag thing go off like oh crap i just got shot and everybody yeah. like boop, hit the ground like to me, that sounds really fun. Like, I like the idea of shooting at actual perceivable ranges, mm -hmm. um, but the other issue with that is that a laser is a very straight system. I don't have to compensate for Kentucky yeah. Wind or any of the. You literally just point and yeah, shoot. Yeah, you don't have any of the difficulties of shooting well, at a laser. Well, the long thing range is, though, I that, mean, so. a laser to work at a distance of 500 yards, like, the thing is, because those lasers are invisible. They're not, I don't believe they're visible. Lasers. No, no. Um, I think it's IR, actually. I'm not yeah, I think it's IR. I don't know what the range of an IR actually is. I imagine with the laser system, you have a pretty good, depending upon the output of the yeah. wattage, you have a yeah, pretty Yeah, that's good the thing range. is, well, I mean, you hit a certain, certain wattage, then it's actually dangerous. True. To people's, true. like, eyeballs and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I need to look into that system and see what G&G is coming up with. I'd be curious to see what the, uh, like, end product is going to yeah. be, right? I mean, the tracer units in general are really cool, so. Um, he said that would be great for a simulation game. Exactly. It would be great for a military simulation game, like something like... Um, you know, if there was an event organization like Milson West, for instance, just as an example, if they were like by every, like everybody had to have these. The issue with this also then goes into like, okay, what if I don't have a gun that I can put a suppressor on? Or what if I'm yeah. running, like, what if I'm running an MP7? Like, what if I'm the MP7 guy in my crew? Like, how am I, I can't add that suppressor without yeah. getting like super modification stuff? Like, I don't know. It just seems like a tough situation. A peck box would be the better option, where every time you pull the trigger, the peck box shoots the laser. I thought they were coming out with a version like that. I, I feel know. like I know BL Tech had like that sound yeah, one. Yeah, the sound one. But like a sound one with a laser next to it, mm -hmm. and then blank fire. The question is at that <laughs> at that point is it like any point even having BBs anymore? You know yeah, I mean? yeah. At that point, aren't we just playing with the military's laser system that they built? Yeah, <laughs> they just use blanks instead. So. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of hard. So, Russian Ranger eighteen says, "I need a CQB gun. What would you recommend for two under two hundred and fifty dollars?" So then again, I was, just, I was reading someone's comment. You can get a ton of stuff for under 250 bucks. Oh, 250 yeah. bucks starter gun. What do you get? Oh, man, I gotta actually Ooh. look and see what I can get for that price. I feel like we have some FMG fours that are rather on that price range. I would totally get an FMG four. I mean, Those it's all Lonex, are awesome. so it's just like yeah. a beast. Um, I might get an AK though, like a nice AK, G and G. I think the Echo One Platinums are around that price right now. Oh, the new stealth ones, right? The great yeah. ones. Yeah. Well, those ones, but I thought they went down in price anyway. Oh, did he say SMG? I think he wants SMG. Oh, SMG. Uh, SMG? Did you say SMG? Because if you did, I apologize. Uh, I don't see it anymore. I'm going to assume that you said SMG because people are correcting me. So, um, SMG under 250? Ooh, that's kind of tough. The GAT? There's Maybe the, the GAT. Spectre? That Spectre with a buffer tube adapter and a suppressor on there actually looks really cool. I don't know if you guys have seen this or not, but the the Echo One Spectre, is Echo One that makes that? Wait, Spectre. Pull, pull up an image. I don't know yeah. you're, are you talking about the the it's, general assault tool, or are you talking about the... Not um, the GAT. It's the... Rapid deployment, the RDP? Yes. Is that what you're talking yes, about? Yes. Yeah, I was like, I don't, where did you get But this? they call it the Spectre, though. 
Is it called the Spectre? Yeah, RDP. Yeah, the R oh, it is, yeah, Spectre. RDP Spectre Rapid Deploy Pistol. Like, the Spectre? Uh, it's got a Mad Bull bucking, and it actually shoots very well. It shoots pretty dang far, too. It's 131. Yeah. I would probably, I mean, honestly, that's a pretty cool little, like, CQB, SMG. It's only 130 bucks. Like, you could easily get all oh, the yeah. extra stuff on it, too. Like, high caps uh, and the, the stock on it would be yeah. awesome, too, so... Actually, I don't think they make high caps for that thing. I think it's only mid caps. Oh, well, it's 40 should come rounders. soon. I, don't, uh, I mean, scroll down. Maybe they do have high caps. Not yet. No. Whoa, go back up. There's a package deal. You could get a... Wow. Wait, so, so you can get a package deal right now. Actually, it's for $20 less, you can get the Echo One Spectre RDP with five magazines for $105 right now. That's a crazy good deal. Yeah, like, I kind of want to just buy one of those to throw it in my bag. Like you, if, man, that's actually that's a crazy good deal, by the way, guys. Yeah. Uh, the Echo One Spectre RDP is only a hundred and five dollars right now. That's very surprising to me. Um, all right, let's answer some more questions. We got a few more minutes less let's left. See. What's a low-costing HPA system for an M4? Probably the SMP. Yeah. Either that or the Jack. The the Polar Star Jack or the SMP are probably the two that are competing for that price point. Uh, so I would definitely say check out either of those two options. If you were a scented candle, if I was a scented candle, what would your scent be called? If I was a scented candle, what would my scent be called? <laughs> this is a, that's a really tough question. I think mine. I call it a hint of man. A hint of man. <sighs> I don't know. What guy guys in the comments? What should my scented candle flavor be? I'm gonna open this up for some ridiculous <laughs> criticism. Um, but hey, let's find out what happens. What's the worst? What's the worst gonna happen? It's the internet, right? right? Nobody does anything negative on the internet. <laughs> no, ever. no, yeah. everyone's you, super positive. You think people on the would internet. just go on the internet and be mean to people. No, no, <laughs> no. If I had a scented candle, what would it be, guys? Come on, come up with a good one. Irish drunk. There you go. <laughs> Irish. Drunk. That's that's a pretty. What does it smell like? Bailey's. Doesn't Bailey's actually smell pretty good? Yeah, Bailey's smells wonderful. Because yeah. yeah. it's just what? Cream? cream Can cream you show the yeah. green gun behind you? I assume he's talking about the 416. Yeah, that's what I assume. That's the greenish we got. Yeah. I think it might be the color correction on the yeah, screen. What's it look like? So oh. this is, once it catches up, let me oh, switch over to the thing in the jank. This. this is the VFC. Yeah. yeah, it looks a little greenish. So this is the VFC. H and K four sixteen, a scent of dank, possibly, possibly with all those memes, boys. Uh, this is a H and K four sixteen that has been kitted out to match the gun from No Easy Day, written by Mark. Owens. Was it No Easy Day? I thought that was the. This is the No Easy Day ish okay. gun. We also did this like Lone Survivor too. I think it was where this one was like fitting into. Was not Lone Survivor. Uh, um, uh, Zero Dark Thirty. Yeah, I was gonna say I thought so, that was, we also call it the Zero Dark Thirty because so, it looks similar. Yeah, I think the the paint job. Jason Hill's a good friend of mine did the paint job on this. Um, it could have been a little differently done, but it still looks very cool. And overall, the gun does fit that build. Um, I think painted guns in general are just so awesome. Like the painted gun, when everything is painted, uh, really can just change the look of a gun oh, and yeah. make it something totally unique. So, someone said. Uh, See. Super salty? That'd be a great Super salty. Name. That's a tough white guy. Ooh, of of nice. all the flavors you could be. Pomade and be murder salty. oil. Wait, what? What's what's murder oil? Murder oil is that uh silicone lubricant. Silicone lubricant? Yeah, awesome. we sell it. It's it's good for gas blowbacks, actually. I'm excited. He is murder a oil. Murder oil. When will Airsoft GI do custom paint jobs? Um, I think we're in the process of trying to get it up and running. It's just uh, logistics of things we're still figuring out. Yeah, it's been definitely a long time coming. It's something that we wanted to do for you guys, but just kind of like obviously is a bit difficult to... Uh, there's so many different custom paint jobs that people want. Yeah. Slash options slash the time. You know, it takes a lot of time to do custom yes. paint jobs. Especially when you have something as intricate as like all of the pieces that need to be painted with it as well. So mm -hmm. uh, it definitely adds up pretty quickly, so... One last question. I think that's all we got time for. Yes, it is. All right, so we got one last question. Make it a good one. Why do you recommend knee pads? If so, people keep recommending it. All right, let's answer this. This is a good one. Actually, it's a good one. Why should you wear air pads in airsoft? Air pads? Air pads. Knee pads. There you go. In what's, airsoft. what's an air pad? Um, I used to actually be one where I never wore knee pads. And then it wasn't until I was like, there's so much cover that's low that I'm like, if I could take a knee... Would probably be better. Yeah. And then, like, my first Sunday knee pad were those big old, like, ones you see in, uh, 
was that movie uh, Black Hawk Down? Yes. Like the, they look skater. like they, yeah, the yeah. skater ones. And like I would do a crisscross on the back to make him stay up, and then finally I just said screw it, and I bought the hat, the uh, hatch ones. And those are the best knee pads I've ever had. They don't go anywhere, and they actually move with your knee. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, especially places like Game Pod where there's just BBs on the ground, you do not want to take a knee on some that BBs. Is that is killer. Oh man, that hurts so bad. It's like um, stepping on a Lego. Yeah, I think I think the only two things for me would just be like if you're gonna wear knee pads. Uh, I mean, you can buy those cry pants that have them already built into them, which are pretty awesome, but mm-hmm. they're going to spend 200 bucks for that. So, uh, But think about like this. 300. Like, oh, yeah, let's. I mean, you can, get some time, really, bro. you can get some really good pants nowadays that have built in knee pads that are awesome. Definitely got to stay in place. Personally, I, I recommend rocking the one knee pad. Like, one knee pad has been my go to. I just use the one on my left knee and always take a knee if I need to. But taking a knee on BBs, like, you oh, it saying, kills. It kills. It is so bad. It is so bad. So. You know, wearing this thing, I feel like I should be like, hit a button and just be like, pfft, and then like, beep, 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 and then you start, start laughing. laughing. Yeah. <laughs> like Billy from uh, Predator. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's what these things look like, the Predator uh, arm things. Yeah. They kind of are looking very similar to those, actually. <laughs> well, boys and girls. The end of the live show Q&A session is upon us. We have had another wonderful time hanging out with you guys, answering all these awesome questions. Um, but, as usual, the time has come to an end because it is swelteringly hot in the it studio. Is. As We're you guys both kind of shiny. And kind of shiny, very shiny. Yeah, very um, shiny. But, hopefully you guys have a good rest of the day. We'll see you next Tuesday for the live show. As always, if you guys have more questions, feel free to hit us up on Facebook, any of the uh, areas that you can connect with us. Hit us up on Instagram. Snapchat. Snapchat Follow us yeah, on Snapchat. We actually have some fun with Snapchat. Snapchat is super fun. If you guys aren't following us on Snapchat, you are seriously missing out. You can find yes. that information on our Facebook. All right, boys and girls, have a good one. We will catch up with you guys very soon. Yep. Enjoy. And take care, Facebook. We will see you guys 